Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here, and welcome to the remote recording process, part three. So in part three of this six part video series, Mr. Cameron Flurry is gonna run you through his home recording rig and how he records and captures killer sounding professional metal drum tracks in his home studio. So without any further ado, here's Mr. Cameron Flurry. Hey Bobby, thanks for having me. My name is Cam Flurry and I'm gonna take you through my drum recording studio. So we're gonna look at things like mic placement, mic choices, and just some of the things that I think about when it comes to recording drums at home. So I wanna walk you through this whole setup and give you the lowdown on what I'm typically using on a normal drum recording session. So if you don't know who I am, my name's Cam Flurry, and you've probably seen me on Glenn Fricker's channel or you've seen me drumming like Lars Ulrich or Mike Portnoy. I've got my own YouTube channel that you might also recognize me from. So I do home recording. I do a lot of session work from home and I also have a drum academy that I teach drummers how to play metal drums properly. So what you're gonna learn in this video is basically mic setup, my choice of mics that are pretty inexpensive to get a really good sounding drum take. And when it comes down to it, all the gear doesn't matter because if the drummer isn't that good, then you're not gonna get the best take. And I think when you want tight, punchy, concise drum tracks for metal stuff that you need to be on the ball, you need to practice to a metronome, and you need to be really tight with your playing. And so if you really wanna advance your double bass drumming, then you could go down to the description below in this video and pick up a free double bass drumming control mini course. It's got over 15 exercises in it and you have lifetime access to it. You can go through all these exercises and you're gonna build better double bass drum and control. And what that's gonna to lead to is your ability to be able to play faster on your double pedals. And who doesn't wanna play faster on the drums? You know what I mean? So if you wanna grab that, you can go down to the link in the description below, click it, and it'll get sent to you automatically. You'll have instant access to it. So let's get on to the stuff we're all here for. Let's have a look at my drums and my microphones. For starters, we're gonna take a look at my overhead microphones. These are the Lewitt LCT340 microphones. They've got built-in attenuation and they've also got a low pass roll off. So as you can see here, I've got it passed at 40 Hertz and then I brought it down about six dB because I don't have any inline pads other than what's on the microphone. And the source sound is really, really loud. So obviously we're gonna to wanna to take that signal down going into the DAW. So these microphones are set up in a space pair configuration. They're equidistant from the center of the snare which just basically means they're the same height from the floor to the capsule on both sides, and they're both the same distance from the center of the snare drum. And if you know anything about drum recording, phase coherency is your best friend, right? So you want the phase to be as in line as possible, and that's why I went with this. I find that using this traditional space pair approach really gives me the best overall stereo imaging for the drum sound. Let's move on to the Tom microphones. All right, for all of my Toms except my second floor Tom, I'm using these CAD M179 microphones. And what's cool about these is you can actually change the polar pattern right on here with this dial. It's got built-in attenuation, uh, minus 20 dB, and then it's also got a low end roll off. So what's cool about these is that you can actually change it to hypercardioid. And I think that these sound best in that polar pattern on the Toms. Now you can use other patterns and kind of distinguish what sound works best for your recording. But in my case for metal drums, these things sound incredible on hypercardioid. So that's gonna give us some rejection at the rear and it's gonna really be focused on the tom. Now, as far as positioning goes with these, I kind of have it a couple fingers off of the batter skin because I want the attack, but I also want a little bit of sustain from the drum. Obviously that's gonna be filled up with the room mics, but. I really typically just like getting the attack and a little bit of the sustain from the drum to help it cut through the mix. Now, obviously when you record drums with a dense metal guitar sound on it, you want these things to be punchy. So I found that right here and right over here that these are the best mic positions for this drum set in particular. Your mileage may vary and obviously your microphone obviously will have different sounds as well. Next up here is my Ride Spot Mic, and this is just basically a Lewitt LCT-040 match pair, and they're great because you could kind of position them wherever you want, depending on your drum set and room size and your, your mic stand, you'll be able to put this thing practically anywhere you want. So the idea with this is that I've kind of got it pointing here between the bell and the bow of the ride, and I find because I do a lot of accented ride patterns and a lot of pinging here on this ride, 
that this is the best mic positioning for me and what I'm going for sound wise. You got to remember too, it all depends what you want to go for and what you want to achieve audibly. And that's really going to determine where you want to point the microphone. So in this case, on my heavy hammered ride, I've got it, as you can see, pointed here, just where the bell meets the bow of the ride cymbal. Next up, I got another one of these little suckers here, the LCT-040 match on my China cymbal. Typically, a lot of guys don't spot mic the China cymbal because you're going to get a lot of it in the overheads. But in my case, I had one of these floating around and I figured if I had it, it would be better than not having it at all. And how I position this, I'll show you here, just let me go down here a bit. How I have it positioned is just kind of on the flange part of the China cymbal. And again, all I did to find the sweet spot on this was just kind of move it around, do a take, move it around and see what, what sounded best. So I found that this capsule is pointing right down here, kind of where I strike on the opposite side. And that's where I find I get the most stick definition and it cuts right through a nice metal guitar mix, right? Because I'm hitting the exact opposite side that this is, this is miking. So that's where I put the China symbol and that's the microphone I use for that. Let's move on. All right, my snare top mic is an MTP 440 DM by Lewitt Microphones. It's basically the equivalent of a 57. And so it'll give you that kind of similar response, not so much on the high end. And that's what I use on my snare top. As far as positioning goes on my snare top, I'm trying out something new here. So I'm just miking it halfway up the capsule right here, pointing towards the center of the drum, just so I could get more of that snap out of the rim shots. And I found that that's pretty efficient. I'm pretty sure the engineer for like Three Days Grace and a bunch of other bigger bands uses that. So I've seen a video on it online, wanted to try it out. And of course, once you have something set up and you like the sound, don't be afraid to experiment to get different sounds because obviously you want to have your own sound, but you want to be able to explore all these different rhythmic and sonic possibilities as well. For my snare bottom, I'm rocking a classic SM57 and I've got like a 32 strand snare wire on the bottom. So I get really good responsive ghost notes and stuff. And this thing picks it up quite nicely. How I have it mic'd is about two to three fingers away from the snare drum. Obviously you're going to want to gain stage it accordingly because you don't want it too hot of a signal, but that's basically it. So I've got it a little bit off axis. It's not pointing straight up and down and you know, it's kind of getting a little bit more low end when you go off axis. So that's just something to keep in mind. Again, try out different mic placements, try out different microphones to see what works best for you. Okay. Over here on my hi-hat, I'm rocking another LCT 040 match. And again, this is not necessary because your overheads are gonna pick it up. And I'm just a little bit overkill and OCD with my drum miking and tracking. I feel like if I wanna bring hi-hats up in certain parts, which is not usually necessary because hi-hats like to ruin everything, especially the, the snare sound. But I'd like to have that little bit extra access to being able to play with the, the volumes. And if I need to automate a little bit of the hi-hats, if there's some intricate parts that need to be brought up in the mix, it's nice to have this. And heck, I had an extra microphone, so why not mic it up? Again, totally not necessary for metal or tracking drums, but if you have the extra inputs in the microphones, then by all means, experiment with it. There's no harm in doing so. So I've had it over here before at the edge of the hi-hat, just pointing straight up and down, and I found there was a lot of air to that, so I just kind of moved it in towards the center here where my stick would hit over here. And I found that I get a lot more stick definition in my hats, and when I'm sloshing on them or I keep them open, it's not too harsh, okay? So I'm not getting all that extra 10K or extra information that I really don't need in the mix. So I found this is the best mic positioning for this. Again, gain stage it properly, but mic positioning and sound source is the most important. All right, on my second floor tom over here on my left side, I've got the AKG D112. And typically you'll see these for kick drums. Now they're really good for bass cabinets too, but in this situation, I want to apply it to this floor tom because it has a high SPL rating, which just means it can handle higher sound pressure. This thing is great for floor toms. So if you have one of these kicking around, I highly suggest checking it out. But if you don't, it's not necessary. And I just wanted to try out some different mics and some different positioning with this. The idea in positioning this one is kind of pointed straight down, not at the edge, because I don't want to get all that low end, but I want to get the attack. I kind of found a nice in-between spot here to get best of both worlds. So that's what's happening here. That's why that mic is where it's at. And that's why I went with that mic choice. That and I didn't have any other microphones I wanted to use on it. Next thing we're looking at here is what I'm doing for my kick drum sound. And I rock these foot blasters, I'm an artist. And so what these are basically foot pedal triggers. 
I've also got a Roland that I have, but you know, I just have it for options basically. So I've got one under here and then I've got one under over my main pedal over here as well. And you can see I've got the Roland up here, and, but basically I just, you know, just like having the option. So I'm obviously triggering, that's going into a Roland TM2, which is basically a two input module. And so what I do have is a microphone in there and I'll give you a glance at that as well. But really what I'm doing is I'm, I took an original sound source from my kick drum and I kind of blend it into the triggering because I play a lot of fast heel toe stuff. And a lot of the stuff that comes through needs a tight punchy kick drum and I can't spend all of that amount of time trying to get a good kick drum sound every time I do a new session. So I like triggering, it's nice and easy and I can just kind of shape the sound of the kick drum the way I want it to sound and what the song actually calls for. So this is the kick drum mic I use. It's the DTP 640 Rex and it's a dual element kick drum microphone. So it's got a dynamic and a condenser capsule on the inside and they're both perfectly phase aligned. So if you're looking for a really kick-ass kick drum microphone, then go check out this Lewitt DTP 640 Rex. Again, you can attenuate it and you can also adjust what each capsule is doing. So it's pretty cool. It comes with a cord that has two separate inputs like this. Okay, one says dynamic and one says condenser for the drummer to not easily confuse. And you can position this how you please. So basically I have this thing pointing in the center when I actually use it to, you know, do some different sounds and stuff. But as it stands, it's just kind of a placeholder for me making sounds for my triggered samples. That's basically it for the drum set. Now let's go on to the most important microphones in this whole setup. It's nice to have good close mics, but the room ties it all together. And I'm sure Bobby drives that home too in a lot of his drum recording videos. So let's take a look at which microphones I'm using and why I decided to place them where they're at. Okay, so these are ribbon microphones. They're Apex 210Bs. They're super cheap. I think they're like 150 Canadian a piece. So maybe like $75 US. And I've got one here right beside my nice homemade bass traps. And it's on the opposite corner of the drum set. So I got that one here. And then there's one tucked behind the other guitar rig over here. And it, you know, there's obviously bass treatment in here. But I think what's really important about proper room mics is that you glue the close mics together. And that's really what those microphones are for. So if you want a really good microphone to do that, that's not gonna break the bank, then really check out these Apex 210Bs. Now you gotta remember the best gear is not gonna give you the best results. It's a culmination of a bunch of things. Great drumming, okay gear, a great sounding room, and the best tool of all, your ears. But most importantly, if you wanna become a better drummer, you can go down to the link into the description below, and I've got a free double bass drumming control mini course that will help you get faster speeds on your double bass pedals. If you had any frustrations or friction with your weak limb, then you'll definitely wanna check this out because it's gonna really help you develop and learn certain exercises to help you excel in your double bass drumming. So again, thanks so much, Bobby, for having me on your channel. I really do appreciate you taking the time for me to take you through all of my drum gear setup. And I hope you learned something valuable here. My name's Cam Fleury and I'll see you in the next video. Cameron, thank you so much for sharing your drum recording setup. And for anyone who's watching, be sure to catch part four of this video series tomorrow on Cameron's channel. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. And finally, part five of this video series will be uploaded here on Friday. And you're definitely going to want to catch it if you're a Reaper user, I'll be showing you in detail how we go about mixing guitars and bass right within Reaper using mainly stock plugins. You're not going to want to miss it. And until next time, happy recording.